Donald Trump breaking out of that freezing court icebox, also known as the America's Newsroom Studio, this morning with Bill Hemmer. But back in the warmth of his supporters, including Uncle Sam, you can see him there. The former president had a rare break from his criminal hush money trial today, and he used that time off to hit the campaign trail in battleground states, Wisconsin and Michigan. A Fox News head-to-head -head matchup shows Trump holds the advantage in Michigan, and he's tied with Biden in Wisconsin, which is where Trump gave voters one heck of a show today. Uncle Sam is right here. Look at him. You are perfect. He's in good shape. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Look at this guy. You think Biden can bend down like that? I don't think so. You know, we're leading virtually every swing state by a lot. And we're going to make America great again. Biden has run the government like uh, Robin Hood, essentially in reverse. Stealing from the poor and giving it to the rich. And we're going to throw out Bidenomics and we're going to replace it with Maganomics, Maganomics. But isn't it nice to have a president who doesn't need a teleprompter? Not that he can read it anyway. <laughs> president Biden is trying to counter the showman Trump by going Hollywood. A new report claims he's working on highly secretive campaign videos in his home state of Delaware. It sounds like it's a big budget flick with high end video production and extras on the set. And if that doesn't sound Hollywood enough, Steven Spielberg is going to help Biden produce the entire convention that they'll have in August in Chicago. Kevin, one of the things President Trump decided to do today is have a big laser focus on the economic message. We know that uh, you, you mentioned border security and immigration is one of the top issues, but we also know that immigration, uh, sorry, the economy is. And he really talked about how Biden is saying that he would let Trump's tax cuts expire and letting that settle into the people's consciousness. So your thoughts on Maganomics and comparing that to Biden? Yeah, I, I, I love to have this narrative without getting into the partisanship about talking about who's running politically to win as president. Taxes, when you raise them, slow growth. It doesn't matter who you are, what party you're in. And right now, we've avoided a recession. We had a soft landing, which was engineered by uh, the Fed. It's amazing they did it. The last thing you want to do now, while inflation still is above 3%, is to whack it with more taxes. Because it, when you tax the middle class, that is a form of inflation. You, 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 you leave them with less money to deal with an already inflated cost of food and energy and housing. That's a really, really bad idea. But I get the rhetoric of saying, let's tax the rich, let's make them pay their fair share. You've been listening to that for 200 years. Mm -hmm. That's the, ever since the first tax came to America. But it doesn't work right now. I'm against changing anything that would cost more to the middle class because we keep forgetting all the time that... 62% of jobs in America are created by small businesses, family businesses in America. They're already struggling with inflation. We've got to give them a break. So who's ever president, we've got to keep the taxes the way they are. And there's one other aspect here that people got to think about. We're in the G20. We compete with other countries for capital. That's what I do. I run around the world raising capital to bring it here to America. That's what I do. We want to be in the middle in terms of taxation, not at the top end. We don't need to be at the low end. In the middle where we are right now. When we were seeing all this contorting of, of pharma companies leaving for Ireland two decades ago yeah. is because it wasn't fair. The taxation was too high. Let's not do that to ourselves again. Let's stay exactly where we are. So what I hope happens here, even if Biden wins, is somebody will talk sense into the policy and say, not now. You won. You're president. We're not going to do something stupid to our economy. Mm -hmm. But this should be an election issue. The reason the market's so buoyant, the reason it hangs in here, and you have a little small correction, but there's a 50-50 chance you get better policy for small business and large business in America, and that's because Trump policy is more accommodative for business, less regulation, more support for energy, better in terms of foreign, in, in terms of what you think about how you have to compete foreign. I, I think that's why the market's waiting to see what happens. Trump looked like the happy campaigner. That mm -hmm. uh, 2020 was a weird campaign because of COVID. So, but 2016, he was happy campaigner. He's back out there. How can what you saw today compete with like a Steven Spielberg production? Well, I think Steven Spielberg is perfect uh, for Joe Biden. He did make Jaws, so he's used to working with a dead fish. And uh, he also <laughs> he also did E.T., which, like Joe, is a, another shriveled creature that can't work a phone. But um, what's the message here? When you have no measurable success, 
you need a story. You can't tout the economy, the border, crime, the unity we were promised. So you hire a storyteller to create a narrative that cannot be measured in statistics or prices or body count. So that's what he's trying to do. I just hope St Spielberg weaves in the juicy bits, like how uh, Joe's what grandfather was eaten by a cannibal, or uh, yeah. he saved six people from drowning, or he was arrested in the civil rights movement. It, it, you know, Joe Biden makes Forrest Gump sound like a shut-in. I just want to say one last thing about Hollywood. Where were they when the anti-Semites Semites were calling for genocide and celebrating October 7th? Think about this. Mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino made the movie Inglorious Bastards. It's actually a pretty good movie, starring Brad Pitt, my look-alike, about a team of Jewish soldiers taking out Nazis. It was a fictional movie. So in Hollywood, as long as the Nazis are fictional, they'll fight them. But just a few miles down the road, we'll stay out of it. Judge, if if President Trump leads, holds in all of these battleground states, he will have an electoral college wipeout that would be bigger than his 2016 and Biden's in 2020. Yeah, there's no question. And I think that America is ready to bring Donald Trump back. I think that they, now more than ever, Americans are looking at everything from the economy to the state of this country. And they're saying, we need someone who's going to fight for us because it's not happening with this guy in the White House. And I have to tell you, Greg, I never thought that, that you know, you, or, you and I overlap a lot on our thoughts, but I'm talking about the same thing. You've got Jeff Katzenberg who ran Disney mm -hmm. and DreamWorks and Hollywood Pictures and they orchestrated this event at Radio City. You've got Steven Spielberg. You've got Rob Reiner. And what are they doing? They have to create a movie because there is no substance to Joe Biden on his own. He can't do it on his own. And so what they're doing is they're creating their own fiction because the truth of what Joe Biden is doing is not sustainable. He's saying we've got the best economy. He's saying the border is secure, that America's back, America's respected on the world stage. It's all nonsense. Al Jazeera today is cheering about those kids on the universities. Uh, and then you've got Putin bombing in the Ukraine. You've got the Taliban running Afghanistan with the weapons that we left there. Israel having its hands tied behind its back. And Xi Jinping is looking at his chops. So, you know, it is, it, they have to create a fiction because the reality doesn't sell. Jesse, this morning uh, when Biden announced the student, the additional student loans, it was for like art students. And I love art, but is Biden trying to lose? You'd think so when you look what he's doing. And the American people want certainty because when you have certainty in your life, it gives you confidence. And then that gives you the ability to go out and do other things. Right now, people aren't certain they're not going to get their head knocked off when they go in the subway. They're not certain that when they send their kid to school, they're not going to be targeted by haters. There's an expectation that we've always had in America. When you walk around, when you go to work, when you do business, when you go into the boys' room, there's not a girl in there. These things have been taken away from us. And what you see is what you get with Donald Trump. He's raw. He's uncut. We know what to expect with Donald Trump. Joe Biden is a mystery man. You don't ever know where he is. You don't know who's in charge. He's disappeared in Delaware with a Hollywood movie producer. <laughs> what are they doing to him? <laughs> I mean, like, there's no certainty with Joe Biden. Anything could happen at any time, and America is tired of living like that. All right. Up next, President Biden has high hopes for the youth vote with his latest big move on marijuana. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.